Everybody's Doc Green, the road scholar. The other day I did my video about bricks, B-R-I-C-S, the British, or I'm sorry, the Brazilian, um, Russian, India, China, South Africa alliance that has grown globally to include more than 20 countries so far and still growing. I did a video about that explaining how it affected the trucking industry while it was affecting our freight. A lot of people text me and I guess they don't even know what BRICS is. And I've been talking about BRICS for about the last five years. The news media has just now kind of started rolling with it a little bit. And no one really understands exactly the, the, how BRICS has became so powerful overnight. Well, let me start off by saying it has not been overnight. BRICS has been in formation for a little over... 10 years. They started off 10 years ago with a plan and have developed it and been rolling with more and more momentum ever since. So a lot of people say, okay, well, what happened and how did, how's the American dollar finally being challenged on the global market? What happened to cause this? Guys, there were several issues. First of all, you have to realize the American dollar was a reserve currency after World War II because we were the ones with the most, the largest economy and able to help build back other nations. However, this, I'm giving you just a rough overview. The Cold War kept Russia and America head to head. China really wasn't a player at that time, a major player. As time rolled on and after Reagan ended the Cold War, um, America's currency still stayed strong. Our military might was considered to be superior in the world and everything. And everyone still depended on America's backing for security and everything for about a good 10 years after the wall came down in the Eastern Berlin Wall came down. The Berlin Wall came down. So after the Berlin Wall came down and after about 10, 15, 20 years, the world started relaxing and realizing, oh, we're not going to go back into another world war like before. Russia's not fixed to invade us. Russia had started turning more, looking to bring in private corporations and work more with the West. So the fear of nuclear annihilation, everything just kind of disappeared. And as it did, and people's memories start to fade away and everything, people began to look at Russia over the last... 10, 15 years as a economic buildup power. China, of course, during this whole time became an economic buildup power. So even though they were talking communism and everything, they were practicing a lot of capitalist approaches, both countries. Um, yes, America was still more capitalist than they were, but they were moving that way. Um, so America's, I guess you would say bargaining chip, some people call it uh, bullying or um, threatening, some call it bargaining chip, of safety and securing their of these European nations and Asian nations and everything with our military might became less and less needed. Uh, China wasn't threatening us militarily. Russia isn't threatening us militarily. They have moved to an economic type of takeover where America's main chip to get lower fuel prices out of the Middle East was, we'll provide you safety from Russia. We'll provide you a defense. Um, America's way of getting trade deals and everything with Europe. We'll provide you protection from Russia. We'll put, we'll put most of the money into NATO and supply your defense. Um, a lot of America's influence in Asia and, and countries such as uh, South Korea, Japan, things like that. We have the military might. We'll protect you from the communist China. Um, and so that was that's what America uses, military might. And so when any of these countries would kind of shift away from our way of line, alignment of thinking, we threaten to pull back out, which means we always had the boogeyman China, the boogeyman Russia as, as the big scare monster saying, all right, we're going to pull our defense and then you're, you're going to be under the Chinese rule and the Russian rule and we won't be able and we won't help you if you don't agree to do this and agree to do that. So it's like always like a power play by America because of our military might and our financial game. So the, 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 the BRICS threatened America on three different fronts, socially, economically, and militarily. And I just went through a little bit of the military, explaining how the military part is affected and how no one cares about the military might right now. 
except for countries like Israel, which is surrounded by its enemies and probably needs to get the hell out of there anyway. But they're going to sit there and stay in there. And as we seen the other day, the Iron Dome was put to the test again after Israel went into Palestine and invaded, raided a mosque there. And it was caught on videotape and just beating the heck out of a bunch of Muslims and stuff in the mosque. And a lot of people say, oh, but look what the Muslims, the people in this mosque were praying. When the Israeli troops went in there, grabbed innocent people, accused them of things that, that obviously were not happening, beat the crap out of them, uh, arrested the 360 of them or something. And you know, good and well, they can't prove that all 360 of those people that one all congregated at one temple and were all terrorists. But that's what they did. And they got caught on videotape, which pissed off all the Middle Eastern countries again at, at, at Israel. So then they started shooting in Israel. Um, these are all things, these other countries that, 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 that Israel is pissing off at everything, like, for instance, uh, Iran, um, Hezbollah, Palestine, not Palestine, but the guys are stripping all that stuff. These countries are in talks with China. China is talking to these countries and saying, hey, look, we want to make trade deals with you. We want to buy your oil and everything. Um, we don't feel like you have to be scared of, of uh, Israel and a military backed America. And, and, and as they gain more power and more influence and people and more countries switching to the yen, these Middle Eastern countries are going, you know what? America ain't nothing anymore. Forget their warnings. And then when America threatens to hold money back from Hezbollah and all that other stuff, they look and go, you know what? We don't need your money anymore. China's financing us. China's helping us build. And China isn't just promising. They're actually coming in here and giving us technology and helping us build highways, help us build manufacturing, help us build communications, seaports, loading docks, um, everything. They're not just talking again. So these Middle Eastern countries are no longer scared of America's threat. As we seen the other day when they started sending over 100 missiles into Israel. Israel um, is in a bad spot. Uh, so basically, militarily, our bargaining chip that is always kind of held the dollar in, in, as a world reserve currency isn't needed anymore. These other countries are not scared of America anymore. They don't care less. You want to go over there and waste your money fighting us and everything? Fine. Like we're, we're sending all that money into Ukraine for Ukraine to fight Russia. And Russia sending a little bit of troops at a time and keeping America sending in billions of dollars at a time. And then Russia and China are running around behind us on the end game. While we're over there sending all our money into Ukraine, they're running around talking to European countries, making gas pipeline deals, making uh, oil deals, uh, making uh, raw material deals, shipping lanes, all this stuff. They're doing all of that while we're shipping uh, tens and tens of billions of dollars over into Ukraine, which we all know in reality, if Russia wanted to, they could walk in there and stomp Ukraine in 24 hours. So why haven't they? It's almost like they got a plan. We'll keep America bogged down over here since they're not bogged down in Afghanistan or anything. We're going to keep them bogged down and keep them spending money on military equipment and bullets and armored vests and, and ships and tanks and everything while we go build shipping routes to get in uh, spices and, and precious metals and uh, chemicals and everything that we need. We're going to keep America buying bullets and gunpowder and building tanks while we build infrastructure and towers and communication systems. And then we're going to see which one of these, these, these countries like more, us or them. And that's what's happened. Now, this is the first video explaining BRICS on a military standpoint. Why Russia doesn't have to offer these countries military support anymore. They're not, they're not their enemy anymore. They're building a pipeline. Russia's working on a pipeline through Germany, through Europe. And and, and Europe is, hey, sounds good, better than fighting. So now they're working out economic deals. While America's over here going, you need to defend against Russia. Russia's the enemy. And, and yeah, I mean, that, that little Ukraine thing kicked off a little bit, but more or less, everything, all the other trade agreements are still going along as normal. And then America threatened the sanctions. We're, you know, we got sanctions against Russia. We're going to sanction it. The rest of the world is not paying attention to our sanctions. Saudi Arabia is trading with Russia. China is trading with Russia. India is trading with Russia. 
Um, Brazil is trading with Russia. Venezuela is trading with Russia. All these other countries around the world are trading with Russia. It's like they're telling us, yeah, yeah, your sanctions is for you, between you and Russia, and we're not going to respect it. So the only one hurting in this deal is America. Russia's still getting trades, a lot better deals than they were before. All these other countries are getting deals and everything with Russia. So, yeah, the military threat is over. That, that little gimmick we ran for about 50 years under NATO and everything, that played out. And every president since, I'll say since Reagan, after Reagan, no, you know, I would say after uh, Clinton, every president out here should have been aware of the situation and been pulling America away from military and more into a financial thing. And none of them have. Uh, well, Trump didn't get us into any more wars, but he tried to promote military buildup and everything, which is not what we need. We need the economic buildup. But Obama got us into more crap. Uh, Bush Jr. got us into more crap that we didn't need to be into. Um, with that whole invasion of fighting against war against terror and everything. Um, all these other countries are skipping past us. They're, they're already all past all that and getting into an economic forum. Oh. So anyway, guys, that's it for this video. And I'll get back to y'all tomorrow.